What's going on you guys? My name is Ty Knotts and welcome to Top 5 Unknowns, 5 Creepiest Valentine's Day Stories. Number 5 About a year ago, I received a Facebook message the day before Valentine's Day, reading, Are we still on for tomorrow? It was from a guy that I went to middle school with, but I haven't seen him in 3 years. I was a little confused and asked back, what are you talking about? He proceeded to tell me the plans that we made to hook up if we were both single. The problem was that this never happened. Initially, I was more outraged than worried. I continued to ask him questions as to why he would have thought that we would have hooked up. He told me that he'd been chatting with me on Twitter and we'd been flirting with each other. This is when I started to get freaked out. Someone was pretending to be me online. I asked for the Twitter handle and the user was recently deleted. I asked him if anything else creepy was going on and he sent me nudes that this supposedly fake me had sent with my face photoshopped on. I took this to the police and they basically brushed me off asking if I'd had a rival girl in school and if I'd flirted with someone's boyfriend. Basically just asking if I was a petty high school girl. What's worrying me now is Valentine's Day is coming up fast and I'm kind of worried about who this fake me may have made prior arrangements with and who's going to show up at my house without permission. Number 4 when I was around 14 or 15, I would bike around with my younger brother and friends. I made friends with this cute boy named Dennis. He and I went to the Valentine's Day dance together and did all the innocent things that kids did with other kids, such as bike, tell jokes, hang out, and go to his place for long walks. As we got older, we drifted apart, going to different schools and getting into separate groups of friends and we gradually just stopped speaking. Fast forward to the morning after my summer school party when I was 16. I heard a few gunshots in the neighborhood area behind my house. Turns out it was a hostage situation. A guy had murdered a woman and sexually assaulted her child. And as luck would have it, it was Dennis. The same kid I used to hold hands with, laugh with, and someone who was really normal turned into a monster. He got put away and it really shook the teen community in my town since everyone here knows each other. Knowing Dennis before this really messed with me. How can people be so normal but end up doing things that are so violent? Number 3 it was Valentine's last month, so I spent the day with my boyfriend. We did what couples normally do on Valentine's Day, had a laugh, and so on. But the time came for me to go home. Since it was pretty late and I didn't like the idea of walking around by myself in an unfamiliar town, my boyfriend walked with me to the train station. It's an odd feeling, but as I was walking across the cars parked to the platform, something went off in the back of my head. It was like an uneasiness, like I was being watched. And sure enough, I was. There was a man probably in his mid-40s parked just outside the platform, sitting in his car staring at me. Not even being subtle or doing it casually, just full on staring. I remember the god awful look on his face. He was staring at my legs and licking his lips. My boyfriend saw that I had frozen, turned around and stared back at the guy. He then slowly pulled away in his car, stopped to wink at me and then merged into traffic and vanished like Batman. I've never seen him again. Number 2 my dad used to tell me this story as one of those listen to your gut lessons. The setting is small town Indiana, early to mid 1970s. My dad is middle school slash early high school aged. His house is about six or seven blocks from the school so when the weather was nice he would walk home alone. One day on his walk, he noticed a guy in a van driving by him slowly. It was a bit strange but he thought nothing of it. Eventually the guy driving the van started yelling things at him, usually asking him to buy drugs. Turns out the guy was Roger, an old family friend. My dad always got this gut feeling that something was deeply off about Roger. He was so afraid that when Roger yelled he wouldn't even respond, he just stared at the ground until he reached his house. The walks must have seemed like they took forever. My dad was one of those kids who seemed to grow a foot taller over one summer so he isn't sure if Roger stopped because my dad was more physically intimidating or if he just moved on, but either way he was glad when the interaction stopped. Fast forward to Valentine's Day 1977. In a different town, still small and remote, a woman is at home alone with her son and three stepsons. Roger and three other men break into her home with shotguns and force her and the boys to lie down on the floor. Roger and the gang threaten them for hours before shooting them one by one. One of the shots partially blew off the wig that the mother was wearing. Roger thought that her skull had blown off and assuming that she'd passed away, stopped shooting her. She survived, later describing hearing a horrible noise as she lied there, then realizing that she was hearing the blood drain from her son and stepsons. She described it as almost like a waterfall. 
Mind you, this is all a 100% true story. The mother eventually identified Roger and the three other men as the perpetrators, with Roger being the ringleader. He just recently passed away in prison. Number 1 I met this guy named Ginger in high school. Both of us were somewhat socially awkward, too edgy for you sort of people that were really into anime and stuff like that. Thus, we belonged to the same friend group. Ginger was built like a tank. We hung out a lot at school and he was always kind of violent, though it never seemed malicious. More like he didn't understand the difference between play and harm. In sophomore year, he asked me out for Valentine's Day. I ended up agreeing. He threatened to no longer hang out with me as a friend if I didn't and I figured what was the harm. Another thing was that he'd always been a compulsive liar, switching between bragging and sob stories but I didn't think much of it until I started dating him. Suddenly all of his behaviors got so much worse. I remember he used to have a chain with two rings on it that he'd spin around his finger and then hit me or pretend like he was going to. It was never that hard, I never bled or broke anything but it did hurt. I started to flinch whenever he'd spin the chain around and he'd brag about how he conditioned me. He later gave me that chain as a gift. I think it was supposed to be one anyway. It just felt like a sick reminder that he could and would hurt me. That year, he got arrested and expelled from school because of threats. That was such a relief, but with less time in school, he had more time for me. He forced me to touch him publicly by literally grabbing my hands and would hit me and make threats all the while saying how he was the best. The longer it lasted, I realized that I needed an escape. He'd come to the same conventions as me, same bus routes, show up at places when I was with other friends and mock them saying that he was better. Every time I blocked his number, he would get a new one. I'd had enough of his manipulation and called his mother to let her know of his latest threat and advised her to commit him to a hospital. I haven't heard from him since then and my girlfriend and I will be celebrating Valentine's Day tomorrow. I hope for his sake that he got the help that he needed. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to click that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep updated with our videos.